Ladies and gentlemen, you're all very welcome to the Royal College of Surgeons of Ireland this evening and to our conferring ceremonies. Before declaring open the formal conferring ceremonies, I'd like to take the opportunity to introduce our platform party. To the table to the front of the stage is Mr. Kenneth Mealy, President of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland. To the back of the stage, from your right, is Professor Ronan O'Connell, Vice President of RCSI. Dr. Anna Clark, Pro-President of the Royal College of Physicians in Ireland. Professor Sean Tierney, Dean of Professional Development and Practice of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland. Mr. Kieran Ryan, Managing Director of Surgical Affairs at RCSI. Ms. Fiona Mitchell, Manager of Registry Services at RCSI. Dr. Michael Malloy, Vice Dean of the Faculty of Sports and Exercise Medicine of RCPI and RCSI. Professor Albert, Albert Lung, Vice Dean of the Faculty of Dentistry of RCSI. Dr. Adrian McGoldrick, Treasurer of the Faculty of Sports and Exercise Medicine. Dr. Edward Cotter, Honorary Secretary of the Faculty of Dentistry of RCSI. Professor Oscar Trainer, Professor of Postgraduate Surgical Education of RCSI. And my name is Cahal Kelly, Chief Executive of RCSI. President, Vice President, Members of Council, Deans, Vice Deans of Faculties, Past Presidents, Members of Faculty Board, Fellows of the College and Faculties. We will now commence the proceedings with the award of Honorary Fellowships of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland. Today, we're really pleased to welcome our three recipients for the Honorary Fellowship Award. They are namely Dr. Barbara Lee Bass, President of the American College of Surgeons, Chair of the Department of Surgery at John F. and Carolyn Bookout Presidential Endowed Chair at Houston Methodist Hospital, Executive Director of Mighty at Houston Methodist Institute for Technology, Innovation and Education Professor of Surgery at Cornell Vial Medicine and Houston Methodist Institute for Academic Medicine. Our second honorary awardee is Professor Frank A. Frizzell, Chair and Head of Department at the Department of Surgery at the University of Otago, New Zealand and Professor Jared M. O'Donoghue from the Department of Otolaryngology and the National Institute of Hearing Research Biomedical Research Centre at Queen's Medical Centre, Nottingham in the United Kingdom. The President, Mr. Kenneth Mealy, will confer our honorary fellow candidates. I'd now like to invite Professor Deborah McNamara, Council Member of RCSI, to come forward and read the citation for Dr. Barbara Lee Bass, President of the American College of Surgeons. Mr. President, Vice President, past presidents, members of council, fellows, members, graduates, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It is a great privilege to present the president of the American College of Surgeons, Dr. Barbara Lee Bass, for the award of honorary fellowship of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland. Dr. Bass is the John F. and Carolyn Bookout Distinguished Chair of Surgery at the Methodist Hospital in Houston, Texas, where she practices as a breast and endocrine surgeon, and she is the Executive Director of the Methodist Institute of Technology, Innovation, and Education, known as MITEI. Dr. Bass graduated with a BSc from Tufts University and received her MD from the University of Virginia School of Medicine. Her residency in general surgery at the George Washington University was followed by a fellowship in gastrointestinal physiology at the Walter Reed Institute of Research, where, in keeping with her family's tradition of service to her country, she was also serving as a captain in the US Army Medical Corps. She was appointed professor of surgery in 1994, and she held a number of prestigious academic appointments prior to her ultimate appointment in 2005 in her current position as Chair of Surgery at the Methodist Hospital in Houston. Dr. Bass has a distinguished academic career. As author of more than 145 peer-reviewed manuscripts, she has delivered 52 named lectures and she has presented by invitation on more than 100 occasions. Her research interests include gastrointestinal cell biology, computational surgery, and clinical and health outcomes research. 
Her research program has been awarded research grants by the National Institute of Health, the VA Research Program, and the National Science Foundation, among many others. And she serves on the editorial board of several journals, including the Annals of Surgery, the most highly cited journal in general surgery. Dr. Bass is past president of the Society of Surgical Chairs and the Society for Surgery of the Alimentary Tract, and she has been honored with named lectures and visiting professorships across the United States and internationally. And most recently, in 2017, she was awarded an honorary fellowship by our sister college in London. As RCSI welcomes the Association of Women Surgeons to Dublin for their annual meeting, and one year to the day from the publication of RCSI's progress report on gender equality in surgery, it's especially fitting to note that Dr. Bass has been honored with the Nina Starr Brunwald Lifetime Award in recognition of her leadership and advocacy for equality, diversity, and inclusion in surgery. She is a former chair of the American Board of Surgery and is an accomplished educationalist. She trains and mentors residents and fellows and she's often, quote, often quoted as saying that a person does not choose to be a surgeon, but rather they discover that they are a surgeon. She has a particular interest in the continuous professional development of practicing surgeons, most especially in relation to technical skills, and she founded and currently serves as the executive director of the Methodist Institute for Technology, Innovation and Education, a simulation and research center that was the first of its kind in North America. The same commitment to advancing her profession is demonstrated in her extensive service to the American College of Surgeons, an organization which she has served in every key role, including on its Board of Regents, its Executive Committee, and as Chair of its Board of Governors, to name but a few. In 2013, she received the ACS Distinguished Service Award, the American College's highest honor, in recognition of her outstanding contributions and not least her leadership role in the National Surgical Quality Improvement Program. She was inducted as 98th President of the American College of Surgeons in November 2017. In her spare time, although I suspect <laughs> that there may not be very much of that, Dr. Bass is an avid sailor, a sport she enjoys with her husband Richard and her sons Wes and Wyatt. Mr. President, it gives me great pleasure to present to you the President of the American College of Surgeons, Dr. Barbara Lee Bass, who I'm sure you will agree is worthy of the highest distinction this college has to offer, the Honorary Fellowship of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland. I, Barbara Lee Bass, do solemnly and sincerely declare that I will observe and be obedient to the statutes, bylaws, and ordinance of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland, and I will, to the utmost of my power, endeavor to promote the reputation, honor, and dignity of the said college. By virtue of my office as president, I admit you an honorary fellow of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland. It now gives me great pleasure to invite Professor Paul Burke, Council Member of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland, to come forward and read the citation for Professor Frank A. Frizzell. Mr. President, Vice President, past presidents, members of council, fellows, members, graduates, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. 
<clears throat> it is truly a privilege to present Professor Frank Frizzell for the award of Honorary Fellowship of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland. Professor Frizzell is Professor of Surgery at University of Otago, Christchurch, and is an internationally renowned colorectal surgeon. He is Editor-in-Chief of the New Zealand Medical Journal, and since the devastating earthquakes of 2010 and 2011, he and others have faced huge challenges posed in restoring health services to the people of Christchurch. We are delighted to welcome him and his wife, Dr. Marguerite Crooks, to this college here this evening. We would also like to extend our best wishes to Professor Fazell's mother, Nancy, and it must give her great pride to think that just over 60 years after she left Wexford Town to follow her fiance, Tom Frizzell, to New Zealand, that their firstborn will be here tonight been acclaimed by the College of Surgeons of the country of her birth. This college has strong links with Wexford Town. Our president is its senior surgeon, and the father of a recent past president, Tom Bro, served as county manager when Professor Fazell's own grandfather and great-grandfather served the same county council. Indeed, another link between the Frizzells and the college is their proud roles in 1916, and you will find a letter in the catalogue of the National Library of Ireland from Nicholas Frizzell, Secretary of Wexford County Council to the Irish Volunteer Leadership in 1916, stating that the Council had adopted a resolution requesting the Lord Lieutenant cancel the orders for the imprisonment of Irish volunteers. Such proud heritage often kept many at home, but others from distinguished families felt the need to broaden their horizons. And so, Nicholas Frizzell's grandson Thomas and his future wife, Nancy Murphy, emigrated to New Zealand in 1957. The Frizzell family grew up in Wellington, where Francis attended St. Patrick's College Silverstream, excelled as an outstanding student and rugby player, and earned a scholarship at the university, to the University of Otago Medical School in Dunedin, where he subsequently graduated in 1985, having also completed a Bachelor's of Medical Science in Pharmacology. As a surgical registrar on the Su Southern New Zealand Training Scheme, Professor Frizzell undertook what was to be the first of his many audits of colorectal surgery, comparing surgical outcomes between teaching and district hospitals. He also completed his master's thesis on factors causing postoperative fatigue. He was awarded his FRACS in 1992 and continued to be recognized with many research awards. He then went to the world-renowned Mayo Clinic as their international clinical fellow in colorectal surgery and subsequently spent a further year under Professor Alf Kusheri as a fellow in laparoscopic surgery. He returned to Christchurch School of Health Science, a senior lecturer in surgery in 1996. His research focus was on the use of randomized controlled trials to assess surgical techniques and the use of audited outcome studies to answer many critical questions about colorectal diseases. Ten years after his return to New Zealand, Professor Fussell was appointed Professor of Surgery of the University of Otago Christchurch and overall head of its academic department. His contributions to the development of pelvic accentuation techniques for recurrent rectal cancer have gained him international recognition as an outstanding surgeon, as evidenced by his honorary fellowships and being the distinguished invited lecturer at the Royal Australian College of Surgeons on two occasions, at the American Society of Colon and Rectal Surgeons, at the Association of Coloproctology of Great Britain and Ireland, and at the European Society of Coloproctology. He has served on or chaired almost every national committee with responsibility for colorectal cancer in New Zealand over the last decade and has recently been involved in exciting research linking gut bacteria to colorectal cancer. He has over 400 peer-reviewed journal articles, 250 presentations and 34 book chapters and in 2014 he was granted the University of Canterbury Medal for Research Excellence. He also has a strong interest in medical legal aspects of surgical health care and the integrity of journal publications, an interest undoubtedly related to his leadership position as editor-in-chief of the New Zealand Medical Journal over the last 16 years. Professor Frizzell's profile as an advocate for proper health care came to the fore as he and his colleagues overcame many of the challenges in continuing to provide health services in Christchurch during the major earthquakes. Canterbury Charity Hospital, of which he is a director, changed its role from doing surgery to providing counselling services to the thousands of physically and emotionally traumatised people in the aftermath of the earthquake disaster. 
The aftershocks of these earthquakes, of these earthquakes continue to this day and pose a huge challenge to Professor Fazel and his colleagues as they strive to restore healthcare infrastructure and maintain health services. Mr. President, Professor Fazel is an outstanding surgeon and clinical researcher who has made an enormous contribution to the management of colorectal disease in New Zealand and around the world. Now, as a surgical leader in his home country, he and his colleagues face unique challenges in continuing to serve the community in which they live. This New Zealand-born, proud Irishman deserves our unwavering support and Mr. President, I'm sure you will agree, is worthy of the highest distinction this college has to offer, the Honorary Fellowship of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland. Thank you. I, Francis Anthony Frizzell, do solemnly and sincerely declare that I will observe and be obedient to the statutes, bylaws and ordinances of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland. And I will, to the utmost of my power, endeavour to promote the reputation, honour and dignity of the said college. By virtue of my office as president, I admit you an honorary fellow of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland. I'd now like to invite Ms Camilla Carroll, Council Member of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland, to come forward and read the citation for Professor Gerard M O'Donoghue. Mr. President, Vice President, past presidents, members of council, fellows, members, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor today to read the citation for Professor Jerry O'Donoghue, distinguished otolaryngologist, head and neck surgeon. Jerry was born and grew up in Tipperary, Ireland and spent his early childhood immersed in the Irish language, where he developed a deep love for Irish culture and the native tip sport of hurling. As a medical student in UCC in the early 70s, Jerry became interested in surgery as a career and also a young French student who was studying English at that time in Cork, Raphael, who later became his wife and lifelong support. Having obtained his F4CSI from this college in general surgery, Jerry embarked on a specialized surgical career in otolaryngology, head and neck surgery. He initially started his training at the Royal National Throat, Nose and Ear Hospital, London, and the Radcliffe Infirmary, Oxford. Perhaps the motto of that great London teaching hospital, the deaf shall hear and the mute shall speak, influenced Jerry to seek fellowship training in the United States. He initially undertook fellowship training at the Boston University Hospital and the House Ear Institute at Los Angeles. During this time, groundbreaking research was being carried out into the surgical management of profound deafness in children and adults. Combining innovative microsurgical techniques and electrical implant technology, Jerry was one of the early pioneers in the development of cochlear implant surgery and in breaking the barrier of deafness. 
Jerry returned to the UK and through his work as an NHS consultant in Nottingham, established the UK's first cochlear implant program for children in 1989. However, at that time, there was no funding for such procedures and it was considered an experimental operation. So Jerry established the Charitable Ear Foundation to fund the cochlear implantation program. Cochlear implant surgery is now an established approach in the management of children who are born deaf. And Jerry has become a global ambassador for the training of surgeons and the establishment of cochlear implant programs internationally. To this end, Jerry has worked extensively throughout Serbia and the Indian subcontinent, where he holds several honorary professorships. One of the programs which remains close to Jerry's heart is the Irish program, which he helped to establish with the visionary Professor Laura Vianney, director of the National Cochlear Implant Program here in Dublin and RCSI member of council. As a result of his groundbreaking surgical work and humanitarian exploits, Jerry has been cited in the Guinness World Records for surgical innovation, hailed by the Times of London as one of Britain's top doctors. Here, I would like to reference some of the many distinctions and awards which Jerry has received throughout his career. The Hunterian Professorship of the Royal College of Surgeons of England, Presidency of Otology and Toynbee Memorial Lecturer at the Royal Society of Medicine, the William House Lecturer of the American Neurootological Society, and currently he is Master of the British Academic Conference of Otolaryngology. He is, of course, especially proud of being awarded the Sir William Wilde Medal by the Irish Otolaryngology Society for Head and Neck Surgery here in Dublin. Jerry continues to be a passionate believer in advancing surgery through science. And to this end, he has co-founded the UK's National Institute of Health Research and Hearing. He has led the recent Lancet Review on Global Hearing Health and is driving the WHO to complete its world report on deafness. Currently, Jerry is leading a global consortium on hearing restoration through stem cell implantation, hoping that someday this might supplant cochlear implantation. Jerry returns to his Irish and French roots when time allows, enjoying and finding solace in sailing the waters of West Cork, in skiing in the Alps. He is forever grateful to his wife, Raphael, and to his family who are here today, his immediate family, brothers and sisters, who have supported him throughout what has been an amazing <coughs> surgical journey. Mr. President, I hope you agree that it is with great honor and pleasure that I present Professor Jerry O'Donoghue to you, who I am sure is worthy of the highest distinction this college has to offer, the Honorary Fellowship of the Royal College of Surgeons of Ireland. I, Jared O'Donoghue, do solemnly and sincerely declare that I will observe and be obedient to the statutes, bylaws and ordinances of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland, and I will to the utmost of my power, endeavour to promote the reputation, honour and dignity of the said college. By virtue of my office as president, I admit you an honorary fellow of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland.
Congratulations to our new honorary fellows. We will now proceed with the conferring of fellowships of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland, including Adi Amdam. I invite Professor Oscar Trainer, Dean of Postgraduate Surgical Education at RCSI, to introduce the candidates for the fellowship and membership of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I now invite the candidates for the Fellowship of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland, including Adeundum candidates, to rise and recite the declaration in unison with me. The declaration is listed on page eight of your booklet. I state your name, do solemnly and sincerely declare and promise that I will observe and be obedient to the statutes, bylaws and ordinances of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland. And that I will to the utmost of my power endeavour to promote the reputation, honour and dignity of the said college. I promise to place the welfare of my patients above all else. I promise to be respectful of my fellow healthcare professionals and will re readily offer them my assistance and support. I further promise to continue to learn and teach and maintain my competence for the benefit of my patients, trainees, and the society in which I serve. I now call on the President to admit you fellows of the college. By virtue of my office as President, I admit you fellows of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland. I will call on the candidates to come forward and receive your parchment from the President. Shakir Mahmoud Al Najjar. Hazem Hesino. <laughs> Akhtar Hussain. <laughs> Emmeline Nugent. Bina Chakwanweke Obinwa. Now for neurosurgery, Whale Muhammad. For ophthalmology, Caroline Jane Bailey. Evelyn O'Neill. <laughs> Shokat Ala Shokat Abdulrahman. <laughs> Fay Tan. Clifton Wijaya. <laughs> now, 
trial for plastic surgery, Jemima Jasmine Jararaj. Cormac Weeks Joyce. For trauma and orthopedic surgery, Ali Abdul Karim. Robert Bruce Brand. Adrian Jesmond Kazergeti. Hussam Elquad. Kira Fox. Amin Omer Hassan Amin. James Hepburn. Francis Joseph O'Neill. Mark Quinn. Now for urology, Amjad Jamil Muhammad Al Muslamani. Not here. In absentia. Bianca Barria. Kieran Breen. Louise McLaughlin. Anna Lucy Walsh. <clears throat> For fellowship at Aundum. Zolt Bodnar. <clears throat> Alonzo Moreno. <clears throat> Naishad Patel. Wissam Nazi Rad. I now invite the candidates for the membership of the Royal College of Surgeons to rise and recite the declaration in unison with me. The declaration is listed on page eight of your booklet. I state your name, do solemnly and sincerely declare and promise that I will observe and be obedient to the statutes, bylaws and ordinances of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland. And that I will, to the utmost of my power, endeavour to promote the reputation, honour and dignity of the said college.
I promise to place the welfare of my patients above all else. I promise to be respectful of my fellow healthcare professionals and will readily offer them my assistance and support. I further promise to continue to learn and teach and maintain my competence for the benefit of my patients, trainees, and the society in which I serve. I now call on the President to admit you members of the College. By virtue of my office as President, I admit you members of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland. Now I will call on each of you in turn to come forward to receive your scroll from the President. Asim Mustafa Abdullah Abdel Ghadir. Nasreen Abdullah. Abrar Ahmed. Noman Ahmed. Isa Yusuf Isa Saleh Al Alwali Adam Bajurson Darrell Pamela Mary Blades Alicia Catherine Cody. <laughs> Gillian Genevieve Crow. <laughs> Michael Lawrence Devine. Joanne Devlin. <laughs> Muhammad Nasser Rashad Ibrahim Hassan. <laughs> Muhammad Khaled Ahmed Kafafi. Karim Mohammed Nabil Taha Kamel. Dara Nicholas Kelly. Michael A. Kelly. Taimur Khan. <laughs> Jeffrey Jiajian Lee. <laughs> Ra 
Rebecca Helen Long. <clears throat> Jennifer Teresa Mannion. Muhammad Harris Mirza. <clears throat> Muhammad Junaid Naqib. <clears throat> Kenneth Edward Patterson. Aina James Ryan. <clears throat> Jessica Maeve Ryan. <clears throat> Lorraine Scanlon. Sohail Shafiq. <clears throat> Ajaz Ali Sheikh. <clears throat> Kieran Stanley. Ahmed Nadim Tahir. <clears throat> Kurat Olin. <clears throat> Hang Wang. For ENT, David Brinkman. <clears throat> For ophthalmology, Claire McCluskey. <clears throat> Rory Murphy. Trassa Murphy. Claire Quigley. For rewards of the Faculty of Dentistry of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland, I now invite the Vice Dean of the Faculty of Dentistry, Professor Albert Leung, and the Honorary Secretary of the Faculty of Dentistry, Dr. Edward Cotter, to introduce the candidates for Fellowship of the Faculty of Dentistry, including adiandum, membership of the Faculty of Dentistry, and diploma in primary care dentistry. I will now introduce the candidates for Fellowship of the Faculty of Dentistry. Will the candidates please rise? And read the, recite the declaration listed on page eight of your booklet in unison, so in unison as follows. I, state your name. 
to hereby solemnly and sincerely declare and promise that I will observe and be obedient to the statutes, bylaws, and ordinances of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland. And that I will, to the utmost of my power, endeavor to promote the reputation, honor, and dignity of the said college. I now invite the Vice Dean to admit the new fellows. By virtue of my office of Vice Dean, in the presence of the President, I admit you fellows of the Faculty of Dentistry of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland. I will now call each of you in turn to come forward to receive your scroll from the Vice Dean. Oral Surgery, Sally Tassan Sally Al Qadi. Oral Surgery with Oral Medicine. Hassan El Awar. <laughs> Vishal Ranjit Singh. Quram Zafar. The Adiundum. Dimpna Daily. Jade Miller. John Rakowskis. I will now introduce the candidates for membership of the Faculty of Dentistry. Will the candidates please rise and recite the declaration listed on page 8 of your booklet in unison as follows. I do hereby solemnly and sincerely declare and promise that I will observe and be obedient to the statutes, bylaws and ordinances of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland. And that I will, to the utmost of my power, endeavour to promote the reputation, honour and dignity of the said college. I now invite the Vice Dean to admit the new members. By virtue of my office of Vice Dean, in the presence of the Presidents of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland, I admit you members of the Faculty of Dentistry of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland.
Now I will call each of you in turn to come forward to receive your scroll from the Vice Dean. Mohsen Al-Fazari. Dima Afane was in absentia. Rehab Al Zajali. Ragad Alauni in absentia. Khalad Al Harthi. Suha Al Judaibi Asma Al Rashid Musayed Al Sawait <clears throat> Habib Butt. Michael Donnelly. <clears throat> Eamon Donahue. In absentia, my Hamad. Marwa Hassan Mohammed Hassan. <clears throat> Ala Jarki. Ahmed Kahatab. <clears throat> Hugh McGrory. Jill McTiernan. <clears throat> Rua Mohammed. Nicole Morgan. <clears throat> Hyder Najam. Sylvia Nowak. (laughs) 
in absentia, Rowan Osman. Marina Pimentel. <laughs> Mohammed Samara. Nerman Shalan. <laughs> Memuna Sohaib. Mohammed Tayel Seed <laughs> Dina Zaitun Noor Zaya. <laughs> Limia Ahmed Mohammed. Harriet Byrne. We now move on to the Diploma of Primary Care Dentistry of the Faculty of Dentistry. I will call each of you in turn to come forward to receive your scroll from the Vice Dean. Kamal Baig Mirza. <laughs> Jennifer Coughlin. Andrew Davies. <laughs> Mairead Hennigan. <laughs> Amanda McLaughlin. Nicolette Ravenscroft. the award of fellowships of the Faculty of Sports and Exercise Medicine of the Royal College of Physicians of Ireland and the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland, including by election and adiundum, I'd first like to invite Dr. Anna Clark, Pro-President of the Royal College of Physicians of Ireland, and Dr. Michael Malloy, Vice Dean of the Faculty of Sports and Exercise Medicine, to come forward and to take their place with the President of RCSI at the conferring table. I now call on the Treasurer, Dr. Aidan McGoldrick, 
to introduce the candidates for Fellowship of the Faculty of Sports and Exercise Medicine of RCPI and RCSI. I will now introduce the candidates for Fellowship of the Faculty of Sports and Exercise Medicine. Will the candidates please rise and recite the declaration listed on page 8 of your booklet in unison as follows. I, please state your name. Do, do solemnly and sincerely declare and promise that, that I will observe and be obedient to the statutes, bylaws and ordinances of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland and the Royal College of Physicians of Ireland. And that I will, to the utmost of my power, endeavour to, to promote the reputation, honour and dignity of these said colleges. I now invite the Vice Dean to admit the new fellows. By virtue of my office as Vice Dean, in the President of the President, Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland, and the Pro-President, Royal College of Physicians of Ireland, I admit you fellows of the Faculty of Sports and Exercise Medicine of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland and Royal College of Physicians of Ireland. I will now call the candidates to come forward to receive your scroll from the Vice Dean. By election, David Burkhoff. Paul Dobelar. <laughs> William Meehan. Michael O'Brien. <laughs> Anne Payne. Paul Pepe. <laughs> Addy on them, Patrick Carton. Frank Coffey. John Cronin. Sophia Dyer. <laughs> Eilish Fitzgerald. Eric Gorelnik. <laughs> Anne 
Abilén. Roger McMurrow. Anthony Ryan. We now move on to the membership of the Faculty of Sports and Exercise Medicine, Royal College of Physicians in Ireland, and Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland. And I invite the candidates for membership to rise and recite with me the declaration listed on page eight of your booklet as follows. I, please state your name, do solemnly and sincerely declare and promise that I will observe and be obedient to the statutes, bylaws, and ordinances of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland, the Royal College of Physicians of Ireland. and that I will, to the utmost of my power, endeavour to promote the reputation, honour and dignity of the said colleges. I now invite the Vice Dean to admit the new fellows. By virtue of my office of Vice Dean and the President of the present, President RCSI and Pro-President RCPI, I admit you members of the Faculty of Sports and Exercise Medicine of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland and the Royal College of Physicians of Ireland. I will now call the candidates to come forward to receive your scroll from the uh, Vice Dean. William Duggan. Abid Hussain. <laughs> Brendan Leahy. <laughs> Farah Maiden. Congratulations to our new fellows, members and diplomats. It now gives me great pleasure to invite Dr. Barbara Bass, President of the American College of Surgeons and RCSI Honorary Fellow to come forward to deliver the guest lecture entitled The Strength of We. Good afternoon all on this spectacular day in Dublin, huh? Weather and this great celebration. President Mealy, Vice President O'Connell, members of council, deans of the faculty, past presidents, faculty and distinguished guests, colleagues, to our guests and family members president. And of course, welcome to you newly elected members and fellows of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland in each of your disciplines. And yes, special greetings to my favorites, you newly minted surgeons. Let me first congratulate each and every one of you on this great occasion for your hard work, your commitment, your diligence in achieving this professional milestone. I congratulate you and remind you as well for your good fortune of having inherent brilliance, a gift that you have chosen to apply to serving others as a healer. Thank you for making that choice. Thank you for the commitment you've made to serve others. Of course, I believe that taking on this mission of service is also, most fortunately, 
a pathway that delivers to us personally a lifetime and a profession that is both of great joy and a precious privilege. Who else gets to use their minds, their hands, their judgment gained from years of experiential learning to benefit those frightened men, women, and children in need of interventions to repair their bodies? It is a thrilling opportunity to be a surgeon, a physician, a dentist, to go forth. So go forth and do good, and congratulations to you. And thank you also to those of you who lifted these newly, member, newly elected members and fellows through this journey. You loved ones, friends, parents, partners, spouses, siblings, I know there's some children out there. All of you who've been there for these young surgeons, physicians, dentists, when they likely needed you most. Thank you for sharing this fine young person with these faculty, with these patients, for these past many years. And again, in the years ahead, as they enter the stage, the next stage of their rigorous careers. We know that you, like our graduates, have given much of yourself during this time. So I hope you're proud and happy. And for me personally, I thank the leadership of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland for this remarkable honor from this great historical college. I will forever treasure this recognition as an honorary fellow of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland and show it proudly for the remainder of my days. I've been so gifted in my life as a surgeon over these last 40 years. While we all have occasional deep, dark moments in our long careers, I can honestly say that I have overwhelmingly enjoyed my life as a surgeon almost every day over those decades. Sustaining belong moments belong to my patients, the art of performing an operation, training and raising new surgeons, forging quality initiatives, fostering an inclusive environment for our new generation of surgeons, contributing to the betterment of our profession and its many missions, and always finding comfort in the friendship with dear colleagues. To all of you, I hope that you each and everyone will find great, way, great joy in your pathways ahead. As I reflect on today, having just received this honor of fellowship in your noble college, I feel this moment as an endorsement of a choice I too made long ago. A choice that more than a few considered a bit reckless that long time ago. Surely a smart young woman would know better than to enter a field that had not often been a home for people with two X chromosomes to thrive and succeed. <laughs> However, once that flame was lit, there was no extinguishing it. I expect most of you in this room know what I mean. And before too long, it became clear, clear to me that this was indeed a wonderful, if at times personally taxing pursuit. I have no regrets. I thank you for this honorary election to refresh my sense of calling. It's also indeed a great honor to have the opportunity to address this group on behalf of the we three fortunate individuals who have been awarded honorary fellowships today. Congratulations to Professor Frank Frizzell and Professor Jerry Donahue, both incredible leaders, contributors, um, uh, surgeons in their disciplines. I'm delighted to share the stage with you. Thank you for the honor of allowing me to speak on our behalf. I know you, as I am, are honored, are honored and humbled on this occasion. I want to briefly address a few points that I hope will be of value to you in the years ahead. With the interest of moving us on to the celebratory moments to follow, I promise I won't go on too long. It is tempting at these moments when we celebrate the accomplishments of individuals who have achieved so much to forget that we are, in fact, part of a highly developed organizational structure in healthcare. It really is not about us. It's about our patients. We are part of a dynamic organism that put all together functions at a remarkably a remarkable level of competency and quality. For proceduralists among us, the stakes are high, for we have but one chance to perform our task with excellence. We all know that a repeat surgery is never our best. But to get to this highest level of performance for our patients, we need not only excellence in our own skills, honed repeatedly over the years, past and future, leveraging, I hope, that beautiful building across the street for ongoing retooling training in the future, but also the collected efforts of all in our healthcare system, our wonderful teams of professionals. 
I hope to convey to you the notion that the greatest tool we have to succeed in providing outstanding care to our patients is the concept of we, the strength that we as a team together can achieve. As newly minted graduates entering into this profession, you arrive with the cautious respect of your healthcare team. They want you to do well, to succeed, to, to become a leader that will bolster the success of the team in serving the patients in the operating room, in the clinic, perhaps at places around the globe. But you must work hard to maintain that privileged respect. You must be aware and grateful of the contributions of all, the nurses, technicians, anesthetists, our physician colleagues with whom you do not always necessarily agree. Yes, even those healthcare administrators, administrators who we are loathe, times uh, re regret, we loathe to embrace. Remember though, we are all in this together with the common goal of healing patients. You must lead and practice genuine humility as a leader of a healthcare team. You as the surgeon may have been the longest trainee, and yes, you direct those steps in the operating theater. You are often the captain of the ship. But don't let this empowered position allow you to lose sight of your dependence on your team to achieve excellence. We always do it best together. A team that operates on the principle of open communication, integrity, and respect is the safest and highest performing unit. To do this, one must recognize certain potential wrenches in the system that may cloud our judgment at times, our unconscious biases, stereotype-driven prejudice, tension, fatigue. Practice self-awareness. Recognize when you know, recognize your own bias, or when you're simply, when your level of frustration may begin to unravel you. Be aware of the many differences that may cloud your perspective. Differences based on gender, sexual orientation, ethnicity, religion, age, political persuasion. Try to understand your own conscious and unconscious bias. The healthcare environment is no place for distracting negative biases for our patients or for our healthcare colleagues and teams. We're fortunate to live in an era where the strength of diversity is at long last being recognized. We benefit from the many talents brought to the table by every person. This recognition of the value of diversity not only is embraces as a common good, common human value, but also as a very practical good asset. We all have different talents. We think differently. We solve problems in different and often peculiar ways, but use them all. They will benefit us all. I ask you newly minted physicians and surgeons to, to be a voice for the dentist, for the strength of diversity, a voice for calm, a voice that excludes bullying and harassment as part of our professional environments. Others may not have uniformly lived up to those ideals before you, but that's not an excuse to not make that pledge yourself. You will enjoy greater success and joy in your work if you can achieve this goal. Treat others with respect, indeed kindness, to achieve the strength that comes from we. We can do this together. We can do this together better. I have one other request, and it's a challenging one. It's true that we work in a personal, uh, in, a per in a profession that comes with high personal risk. In the United States, and indeed around the globe, surgeons and physicians are a high-risk cohort for stress, burnout, indeed for depression, substance abuse, even suicide. I want you to be aware of yourself, your own wellness, and to seek help if you are in trouble. We need to remove the stigma of mental illness and personal struggle from our profession. You can start this. But equally importantly, I want you to be aware of your colleagues, that dear group sitting around you. When you sense a change in attention, mood, behavior, a disturbance in the force, Ask, offer the question of needed support. You may make a world of difference in salvaging one of our own with that initial question. Ask, offer a referral, offer assistance. In the years ahead, as you move into leadership roles in your profession, and yes, that is the natural progression for individuals like each of you, always remember to lead with inclusion, lead with humility, lead as a servant to better your communities, to serve your patients, 
to raise the next generation to advance our fields. By virtue of your newly achieved status as a fellow or member of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland, you have become not only a valuable asset, but also inherently a leader in the eyes of our public. Use that leadership wisely. Commit to being a leader we will wish to follow. Together we can create a bright landscape for the future of surgery, medicine, and all of our disciplines. I wish you every good fortune and bliss in the years ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Vass, for your uh, wise words and sound advice. It now gives me great pleasure to introduce the President of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland, Mr. Kenneth Mealy. Vice President, Pro President, or CPI, Members of Council, New Honorary Fellows, Dr. Bass, Fissell, and O'Donoghue, Chief Executive, or CSI, Dean, Faculty of Medicine, or CSI, Vice Dean and Honorary Secretary, Faculty of Dentistry, or CSI, Dean of Radiologists, or CSI, Vice Dean and Treasurer, Sports of, uh, Faculty of Sports and Exercise Medicine, Academic Staff, ladies and gentlemen, and I promise you that's the last time you'll hear this list this evening. And of course, a big, uh, a special welcome to our new RCSI fellows and members in surgery, radiology, dentistry, sports and exercise medicine, and those awarded diplomas in otolaryngology, head and neck surgery, and primary care dentistry. It is my pleasure to preside over this conferring ceremony and welcome you and your families here today. This ceremony is a fitting recognition of the hard work and commitment that you've shown in your studies and your training and practice over the last number of years. I think all of the platform party and RCSI staff understand the mental and physical challenges required to be awarded an RCSI postgraduate diploma, membership or fellowship. Postgraduate certificates of the Royal College of Surgeons are prestigious, internationally recognized qualifications and quality standards. Holding one of these qualifications demonstrates to colleagues, peers and employers a surgeon's or a dentist's knowledge, clinical skills and commitment to his or her practice. These qualifications recognize your ability to use your intellectual knowledge and critical thinking in the clinical setting, skills which are vital for a successful professional career which lies ahead. These qualifi professional qualifications op also open up a world of wonderful opportunity as you set out on an exciting journey with, which will allow you to continue your training or practice in various specialties throughout the world. Today we also acknowledge our families who have supported you during your years of training and practice. We understand those who have made sacrifices to support your career and rightly are proud of your achievements to date. Medicine and dentistry, however, face many challenges and it is certain that all of you will work in increasingly complex healthcare environments where you will need to use all the skills which you have gained during your training. Doctors and uh, dentists of the future will need to be adaptive to the constant expansion of medical, dental, and scientific knowledge, changes in technology, medicines, increasing patient and societal expectations, in addition to regulatory change, all of which require a commitment to lifelong learning and an ability to adapt to the changing world that we live in. The awards presented here today will give you a solid foundation to continue on this exciting journey. For many of our membership awardees, it is likely that your most difficult challenge initially will be to select which career path you should choose amongst the diverse specialties with, which exist within your subject. Having already made that decision earlier in their careers, fellows being conferred here today must not only manage and maintain their own professional development, but to reach your full professional potential should also contribute to the training of more junior surgical and dental colleagues, contribute to your professional organizations, and engage constructively with the healthcare administrative structures you work in. To support you in such journeys and manage the challenges all healthcare professionals face, we would not only encourage you to maintain the strong links you now have with RCSI, but would also encourage you to form close bonds with those you work with, because increasingly in the health sciences, as you've already heard this evening, there will be an emphasis on team working which requires the ability to communicate effectively, demonstrate leadership, 
and acquire an understanding of the working of the healthcare management and administration in which you will work. It is also increasingly apparent that no healthcare system can fully support all the healthcare needs of society. So it is important to be an advocate for not only each of your patients, but it is also important to understand the broader societal needs in the communities you will work in and use the resources at your disposal carefully. Despite the challenges facing healthcare services throughout the world, the basis of all patient care is empathy, which is the ability to understand and share the feelings of others. This must form the basis of your medical practice, even when working under difficult circumstances. Today is also a time to acknowledge the commitment of the teachers and trainers who taught and supported you over the last number of years. It is their endeavours which have given you the skills to practice medicine and dentistry and which will allow you to make a significant contribution to the well-being of the communities in which you work. RCSI is rightly proud of our mission statement which refers to developing healthcare leaders who make a difference worldwide. This is our ambition for all of you. In pursuit of that mission, we at RCSI are working continuously to improve our engagement and support of our members and fellows. With regard to the MRCS, our college constantly strives, strives to support our examination candidates and provide them with the resources necessary to meet this exacting standard. Candidates are provided with preferential access to online revision tools and core textbooks. We have developed a suite of video tutorials to help candidates ready themselves for all parts of the exam. Today we graduate a total of 534 doctors and dentists, including our three honorary fellows, with fellowships and memberships in surgery, radiology, dentistry, dental, general dental surgery, and sports and exercise medicine, and diplomas in otolaryngology and head and neck surgery and primary care dentistry. You will add to the growing body of RCSI fellows and members who practice around the globe, and we look forward to your contribution as an RCSI fellow or member who are making a difference worldwide and whom we are so rightly proud of. Many of you who have graduated today uh, will travel abroad to work and live in other countries and some to train further and gain additional experience. If that is your intention, it is our hope that some of you will return. Clearly there are difficulties with our health service, but despite the current challenges facing medicine and dentistry in Ireland, I firmly believe that all of us working together can not only improve our health service and consequently patient care, but also the conditions under which our trainees and those appointed to surgical and dental posts within the health service and private sector practice. Finally, let me once again congratulate our new fellows, members and diplomats and acknowledge the support of your families. I wish you every success in your personal and professional lives and I'm confident that passing these milestones in your career will equip you well for the challenges you will encounter in your further trainings and future careers. So thank you very much. Thank you, President. That concludes the formal proceedings. Uh, we would like to invite our new fellows members, diplomats and your guests to join us for a reception in the College Hall and Boardroom. And if I could please ask you to be upstanding for the outward procession. Thank you. <laughs>